We run together. We are corny. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. You've reached the second part of the aftermath for Teen Mom Family Reunion. And let's just jump into it. We're still here with Macy and Ryan. So I'm really sorry I cheated you guys last uh, episode that I reviewed because I'm um, frankly, when I got to the end, I got bored. Okay, I got tired. But anyway, Coach B continues this conversation with Ryan and Macy as she's over here crying her eyes out and asks Ryan, is he in a place where he can be consistent when it comes to Bentley? Ryan says, Ryan says that he can be consistent as long as he doesn't have to deal with everything that he had to deal with in the past. Coach B asks Ryan, what is everything else? And Ryan says, everyone else in the way. So basically, so Macy says that she appreciates Ryan's vulnerability. And I guess what I missed from telling y'all is that Ryan, the last episode, apparently had said some things that he was going to do to be consistent. Well, Macy's basically saying she appreciates what he's saying. She appreciates that um, even the very little bit that he's doing step by step, she said every little thing will help Bentley because that really, really, that's what it's all about. Okay, this is all about Bentley. We have Jen, who's Ryan's mom, and Macy is telling Ryan that Bentley's hurt and there's only one person that can fix that hurt. Obviously, it's Ryan. So Macy says to Ryan, there is a part of Bentley's heart that is hurting. And she says that you're the only one that can make him whole. So Coach B asks Ryan, can you commit to being consistent, which is a hell of a question to a drug addict because he wants to say yes. But he knows that, you know, his life and the stuff that he has going on may not allow him to be consistent. So then Ryan says, you know, I really don't even know what's going on with Bentley right now. I don't know what he has going on. But if it's like picking him up or whatever, um, I can agree to that. So Coach B says, OK, let's start small. Can you commit to FaceTiming Bentley? And he said, if that's what he wants. And, you know, I think it was Coach B that said every little count, every little thing counts, you know. And then Ryan apologizes for the mean things that he said to Macy and she accepts his apology and um this is a heartfelt moment but i just want him to follow through because we've had heartfelt moments before in the past on this show and they didn't turn out too great once we wasn't doing the television show so more action less words so macy goes and apologizes for the things that she's also said she says she's you know she's basically not innocent and she's apologized as well and says that if she can go back and change things that she would and jen is over here about to make me cry because her mouth is quivering and a honey child i know i've been seeing you so much and so for so long on this show i know when some tears are about to fall okay so macy says to ryan i think it would be a good idea if you know this time when we do this co-parenting thing that it's just between me and you because remember i don't know if you guys remember for those of you who are new to the show hello and welcome to my channel they never really did co-parenting on their own it was always macy picking up bentley from his parents or his parents are calling and texting really jen calling and texting macy to say hey can bentley come over or whatever so coach b or is it is it Nessa girl? Listen, I might get these two mixed up because I'm having a little issue with my OBS. Like normally I could just look through my OBS at this thing and I'll be able to rewind, but I'm having problems. I'm having technical difficulties right now. Jen says, you know, she's very proud of Ryan because he's, he never like is vulnerable. So it was a surprise to see that he was being vulnerable and she's very proud of him. He has the best heart. He has a heart like Bentley. He mm. just doesn't always show it. So Coach B says, what would you like for you know to see things how would you like things to go basically to jen and jen says i would like to just step back and see these two talk and work things out and ryan says that he would like to spend time with bentley not at his mom's house but on his own and macy says that bentley would love that okay so we're here with ashley and ashley lets coach b know that she had a miscarriage coach b i get what you're saying but everybody handles situations differently not every woman like has this deep grief over miscarriage. So Nessa asks Ashley about her decision not to be on stage with the other ladies. And Ashley says simply, sometimes people make a big deal out of nothing, all right? And Nessa asks her, how did she feel about the fight that happened? And Ashley says she was over it when she left Oregon. So T's response to that question is a little different. She says she's traumatized. When she came there, she expected a whole lot of, she expected it to just go differently, way differently than it did. So Nessa asks the ladies if they 
mind watching the flashback y'all didn't ask anybody else if they wanted to watch the flashback y'all just played it <laughs> okay <laughs> they played a flashback and of course they're asked how they feel about it and ashley's like i really don't feel no way about it now do i want to appear like i'm you know come out do i want to be having to come out of character like that no but if i came out of character like that it was for a reason so ashley says that roxanne and her mom got into it a couple times and she, and she stayed out of it because she felt like Roxanne was not her equal. But then when Brianna stepped to her mom, that's when it became a problem. T says that she was appalled to have such a day with Coach B and then have that situation happen. So T says she let Roxanne speak. She patiently waited. And when it was her turn, y'all already know what I'm getting ready to say. When it was T's turn to speak, Roxy didn't want to hear what they had to say. And that was very unfair. So we didn't know this, but T was like, mind you, before that incident happened, there were dirty looks being passed. So this situation wasn't something that happened just instantly. This thing had been building, she said. So then T says she bumped her twice in the kitchen. Oh, we must only saw the second time. And she said, okay, it's either I say something or she's going to keep being my bully. And she's that's when she's like, you know, you could apologize for bumping me. T was like how she was saying, I'm not going to apologize. We all saw it. She wasn't going to apologize. Even though she was wrong and even though she did bump her, we did see the video. So Roxanne, I'm not, I'm not even going to go there with what I think about you right now. Seriously. So Ashley says, there's no reason as a grown woman, you bump somebody and you can't say, excuse me, or I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bump you. So Ashley said, when you sit there and say, you're not going to say, excuse me, or I'm sorry, that's my mom. And now we got a problem. So T says that she could have took the high road, but she ain't no Michelle Obama. <laughs> So T says it was an unfortunate thing that happened. She hates that it happened for the world to see, but it was straight disrespect, okay? He's going to put this together because Nessa says, well, you know, apparently all of this started with some stuff that Ashley or whatever, what y'all said online. T said, let's use this straight. Roxanne got on there first and T was tagged by the Teen Mom fan base, okay? She pretty much basically was just responding to what was already said. And T says that Roxanne was online having an entire meltdown about Ashley. So T says that she chimed in and was like, who the hell is this lady talking about my daughter? It's so crazy how you have all these different sides of the story, but it's funny because Ashley and T's side commiserates with what I watched on television. They really trying to make these women look like they're the bullies, they're the aggressors, and it's pissing me the hell off. So T says, you out of your mind if you think you want, you able to talk about somebody else's child, but they can't talk about yours. And I'm not looking forward to re um, reviewing Teen Mom next chapter either. I'm telling y'all right now, I do like reviewing the show, but Watching this season has really turned me off of Roxanne and Brianna, I'm just saying. So Vanessa asks Ashley what stemmed from the situation with you and Brianna, and Ashley says, I just don't like that dirty bitch. She's a snake, she's messy, she's a fake ass selective wannabe bully. I don't know, she's a follower, I don't like her. Oh Lord have mercy, Ashley, you are cracking me up, girl. You're cracking me up. They should have put you on act one and I would have just reviewed act one and I would have not came over here to act two. So Vanessa says, Vanessa says that Brianna claims that she had no issue with Ashley before that situation at the house. Ashley said that's a lie because they had issues long before that. Ashley says that Brianna's baby daddy, which one girl? Cause I don't know which one you're talking about. Anyway, he gave a statement to one of the blogs. She said that Devoin, my bad guys, and I know it wasn't Louis, Louis stank behind, but she said a long time ago before Devoin got into this, and I call him Devoin, that's his, the correct pronunciation of his name. So you will hear his correct pronunciation on my channel, just letting you know. Just trying to respect the way people pronounce their names. I wouldn't want nobody calling me Stacy or Trixie or Trisha, which they have in the past, by the way ridiculous but anyway she said way back in the day Du Bois basically said that she's a bad bitch okay <laughs> and Brianna did not like that okay but it is what it is she is so what did you want the man to say I mean he wasn't with you at the time so why do you care 
And Ashley says she saw online, of course she saw the comment, but then she saw Rihanna commenting to it. Ashley says people like to throw rocks and hide their hands. She said that that situation is actually what kicked off the dislike. It was Rihanna and her rude ass comments. So at this point, I feel like the MTV producers really do not ever want any of the girls to all get along at the same time, okay? So Vanessa asks Ashley, do you think that y'all be cool again? And Ashley says, I don't want nothing to do with that hoe. She ain't say it like that. I did. But that's basically what she said. Coach B says, so y'all basically just existing. So what happens when y'all give each other that look or whatever? Ashley says, I'm not walking around being a big bad wolf all the time. I don't respond to every single thing that happens. And to cut to the crap, T and Ashley, they're not open to apologies at this point. It's too far gone. They want nothing to do with those people. And T says she's done apologizing. She tried to make peace that night and she feels like at this point she wished she could take her apology back. So Coach B says, how does that work with the group? Because a majority of them think you were in the wrong. First of all, Coach B, they're followers and sheep. And they don't want to turn on Rihanna because they don't want to be at a discord with Brianna. So therefore, they're making it so that Brianna and Roxanne doesn't have to be, they neither one of them have to be accountable. So of course, majority of them think that Ashley was in the wrong. None of them think that Brianna was in the wrong though. They're full of crap. And I can't wait to hear Ashley's response to this. I'm loving everything that they're saying right now. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's because I've pretty much been on their side from the beginning because they didn't start any of this crap. So Ashley says, if they are all against me, then that would also mean they would all have to be against the fact that Brianna got on top of the counter and Brianna was throwing stuff. But no, they are really acting like Brianna did absolutely nothing. And these two women are just big old bullies, whatever. And Ashley says, or they would have been annoyed with Roxanne for picking up that chair and acting like she was going to throw it at her mom. She said, that's the double standard that she can't get with. And it's really a bully group mentality and i don't like it ashley says she didn't like it i don't like it either so coach b says she's actually not in disagreement. we're back with the cornball crew and they're so freaking corny and i ain't talking much about this we're sitting here talking to zach and cheyenne and neither one of them are going to talk about anything full of substance so i'm really sorry to jip y'all y'all can go back and watch the show if you want but i ain't talking about this crap okay kaya you have the same face that i have right now i do not care i do not care about your your um segments so yeah let's skip this segment because they ain't talking about much so now we're here with kayla they play the flashback of her going off on luke and nessa says what was the solution to that and kayla says that luke actually stood his ground with his mom and his mother ended up disowning him and his mom says that she wants nothing to do with him and the kids well what the hell did the kids do but anyway if you can't talk to the father or the mother obviously you're not going to deal with their kids either so brianna says and this is the only thing i'm probably going to agree with her about she says she doesn't understand how grown-ups get into situations and you take it out on the children and i fully agree with that if you have a battle with me keep it with me leave my kids out of it I'm sorry, I was trying to focus on what Kayla was saying and Jade is over here squirming like a worm and she's feeling some type of way. I don't know what's going on. It says, you see what it says on the screen? She's having a panic attack. I'm, I'm trying not to think that this is just for drama and this is just for the season because the season was dry as, um, it was dry and lumpy like some old oatmeal. I'm just telling y'all. So Jade is not feeling well. While Kayla's talking, Rihanna's asking Jade, girl, you wanna, do you wanna go get off the stage and go whatever? Now, hopefully somebody realizes Jade is not feeling well. I'm really trying hard to focus. I'm trying hard to focus on what Kayla is saying, but I'm so concerned about, and I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say that, I'm not trying to say that Jade's trying to steal her moment, but why you didn't do this when it was y'all segment? Y'all gotta, y'all MTV people have to be a little more aware of what's going on on the stage. Nessa, I know you're all into Kayla's conversation, but there was a lot of stuff going on like literally right next to you. And obviously when you see people getting up and getting off the stage, you want to stop and say, hey, what's going on? You Are you all right? Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. I don't know what's wrong. I got it. I got it. I got it. Breathe, 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 So basically, because I couldn't even focus, I had to rewind like three times. Luke told his mama off. His mom disowned him and the children. Luke ended up getting an apartment with him and his friends. Him and Kayla are no longer together. That's what I gather before Jade starts feeling a certain type of way on stage. Poor Kayla. Kayla was just trying to have her damn moment. <laughs> Vanessa, I know you didn't think sitting on that stage that you needed to call a medic when you have all these people around Jade. Believe me, they know what to do. They got her. Jade has her ordeal. 
I don't know what's going on there. Don't care for Jade, but I hope she's okay. I don't understand why I have to recap with people who were not on the show. Like he, he wasn't on the show. He wasn't there. Kayla's current facial expression. <laughs> it's my current facial expression. Child, can we just, I don't care about y'all outside of young and pregnant. I'm just being real. I mean, I'm just being real. So Luke comes out on the stage basically says that the breakup wasn't his choice but Luke when you cheated that was your choice I mean they was at a point on Young and Pregnant where they were literally cheating back on each other I mean that is so damn toxic so Coach B asks Kayla oh my god those shoes are beautiful I'm just seeing them wow Coach B asks Kayla what was the last straw and Kayla said she looked in the mirror and she did not like the person that she had became and so Coach B asks Luke where does he think that he fell short and Luke has the nerve the audacity the good gall to say that he doesn't know and then she asks Kayla Kayla says the multiple cheating when I was pregnant after I was pregnant and Kayla says that she loved him, he didn't love her, and it took her cheating on him for him to start developing feelings. Okay, that's weird. Luke admits that he is not ready for any type of relationship. Luke says, I'm not ready for any type of relationship. So Coach B also asks Kayla, are you in a relationship? And Kayla says no. And Luke says to Kayla, please tell the truth. Luke, mind your business, okay? Maybe she has a F buddy. That's not a relationship, that's just a situation, okay? It's a situationship. So Kayla says, I'm seeing somebody, but it's brand new. Okay, so Kayla, just say that. You just said you was completely single. You ain't got nothing going on, but you really do because you're in a situation or a relationship. So Luke says the only thing he has a problem with is the fact that Kayla brought this dude around her kids a little sooner than, a little sooner than he would like. So Kayla says, no, he was there helping, you know, helping me move furniture. Girl, you should have just hired a stranger. I'm just saying. So you're trying to out me right now and there's so much I care about you. So Kayla's over here crying. Coach B's like, you're getting emotional. Very perceptive, Coach B. I'm just saying. She says, you're crying. What's going on? I feel like he always wants to paint me as this bad person. So Kayla says, I feel like Luke is always trying to paint me as this bad person. And it's so frustrating. She says his family does it and he does it. And Kayla says she doesn't feel like she does anything bad to this man. And then... Luke says, the family I don't talk to. And Kayla says, I've helped him. So Luke says that he stood up for their child, our son, who is the son that he claims. And Kayla's over here saying that she does so much for him and all he does is tear her down. Luke said the last thing he wanted to do it, this fighting and arguing because eventually they got to go home. And Kayla says, Luke said before they got there, I'm not gonna fight with you. I'm not gonna do any of that. Kayla said that she told Luke, I feel like you're gonna get up here and twist the situation into something that is not. Even though he claimed he wasn't gonna do that. And she says he's doing that. And she says that he always tries to paint himself as the victim. So Luke says he doesn't wanna cause any problems because that's the, that, I mean, he said that's the last thing that he wants because his kids are his everything. And Kayla knows that. Luke says that he doesn't want their relationship to be any more difficult than what it was. And Luke says he wants to be able to see his children, you know, basically on the regular. He says what they got going on is perfectly fine with them, with him. It was perfectly fine with me. And I just didn't want to come up here and ruin that. And I wasn't trying to. And Luke says that he wasn't trying to come up on stage and ruin that. He wasn't trying to air anything out. So is he not allowed to tell his truth, Kayla? Because it is what it is. If you're seeing someone, you're seeing someone. Why is it such a secret? You know what I'm saying? You could easily say, hey, I'm seeing someone that's not serious and leave it at that. And he wouldn't have even said anything, but you weren't being honest. You said you had nobody and that wasn't the truth. So Luke says, I truly am sorry. That wasn't my intention and you know that. Hi girl, I'm over it. Okay, I ain't got nothing else to say about this show. We run together, we are corny. That's what you are, you're corny. Anyway. <laughs> Oh Lord, I have so much to edit. There's literally over an hour of editing that I have to do for this crap because I literally sat down and I was nice enough to do a full recap for y'all, okay? Hope you appreciate it. I ain't never reviewing this show again. Teen Mom, next chapter, please hurry your ass on so I can be on to a show I actually enjoy. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.